So we have settled into a campsite. How much was this place, Curdy? It was eight thousand, so ten bucks a piece. So a twenty dollar campsite, right along a beautiful river, with some barbecue grills. <laughs> Lots of rocks along the river. People are starting to show up. It's the tail end of summer. I think the locals probably come out, avoid all the tourist crowds and enjoy their local treasures during this time. I think it's probably the shoulder season. The rumor is it has a really good hot shower. So we shall see. But first, I think Kurt is going to do some grilling for lunch. Buenas tardes also a local adventure park we see the rafting company showing up blowing up their rafts we got a little pedrito here a little puppy looks like a rafting tour will be going soon but i imagine this water is cold so a pretty river for our front yard even if we're sharing it with some adventure tourists for the day not a bad front yard, guys. Let's go check in on Kurt. Looks like he's in the firewood gathering stage. You get to build a fire. Are you excited? <laughs> I'm excited. So what's for lunch, Chef Curdy? Do some chicken. Yeah. Chicken breast. I have some potatoes and some mm. zucchini. I always like that on the grill, so we'll see. Sounds that's, that's yummy. That's the likely All scenario. Right. So I'm sitting out here on the riverbank, enjoying a little sunshine, a little vitamin D. It's not that cold. It feels amazing outside. So that is nice. But I'm watching fishermen fish on the bank, some kayakers just putting in their kayaks a family taking a rafting tour going through their safety lesson right in front of me and there they go right around the corner i can't see them anymore they're off for a day of adventure and in the background this whole time is volcano Villarico that smokes all the time now i have a feeling we're gonna have to get out the big camera and get a little zoom video of the smoke coming out of the top of this thing but i think it's probably about time to head back to the van see how lunch is doing so we've got potatoes peppers carrots onions oregano garlic tomillo which is thyme and i'm gonna add a little Ooh. nutritional yeast and we got these new ones, and these are flakes. And snow said they don't stick to the popcorn as good as the powder, but I thought it was a little cheesier, so that'll be our cheese on here. Nice. Then we're gonna wrap it up in this aluminum foil and put it on the fire? Yeah, for me, this is a traditional style. This is kind of what I've always learned from my family and my friends is, do a little wrap it in foil and in this case I got three layers of foil and wrap it in the and then stick it in the coals. So that's oh, what we're yeah. gonna do. So it kind of right. slow cooks it in its own juices if you will. Barbecue sauce has gone on the chicken. We just got the coals. They're pretty hot, good shape. Taters have been in the foil for about 45, 55 minutes, somewhere in there. So they're getting close. Look at that. All right. Let's eat. Come on. A little potatoes, carrots, onion, nice. barbecue chicken. It's going to be a yummy lunch, guys. So we've decided to take a couple of days here at this camp by the river. Get some editing done. Let the kitties relax. They really like it here. Get a few walks. Hi, puppies. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Curdy. How's the editing? Where'd you get some? <laughs> I went up to pay for another night of camping and she was selling them. Two dollars. Got some strawberries. <laughs> How's the editing? It's coming along okay. And I told them we were trying to get caught up here at the camp. We're getting her done. from a little gravel road just outside of the tourist city of Pucon, Chile. We have not taken y'all to see anything like this before. So we've been working our way north here in Chile, kind of just on the west side of the Andes Mountains. So kind of skirting along and actually it's getting a little bit cold. It was about 36, 37 degrees this morning so we're kind of running away from the cold a little bit and in certain areas along these andes mountains where they jut up there's these huge volcanoes so as we move north we've been moving around and playing around in these little volcano areas and they are really special they're all different and they're unique but today we're going to get a little bit different inside look spoiler alert at a volcano and so really excited to see this as snow said earlier this is a perspective that we've never really seen before so we're staring at volcan Villarica. and so if you remember we've already visited osorno a different volcano but on the top of this one it's got like the perfect crater and you can see fumaroles or steam just coming out an old chugging chorting volcano All right, we parked the van over here. Up here, up the volcano, there's a ski resort. You kind of got to take another little detour up another road. But in any event, there's ski lifts just like Osorno. The lake is right down there. And then we have some beautiful mountains. And the leaves are starting to change colors a little bit. But you can see, at some point in time, the lava flowed right here past us. Okay, so we have driven on volcanoes. We have drove around volcanoes. We've walked on volcanoes and taken ski lifts up volcanoes. Kurt has climbed insane, crazy, erupting volcanoes. We've never taken you under a volcano, into some caves formed by the lava during one of the explosions. Today, we're going underground, and you know how much Kurt loves Splunking. <laughs> Ninety two volcanoes, the most active. Can you imagine? 
But which one is the most active? <laughs> of course it is, the Ruka Pijan. But being this active doesn't mean necessarily that it's dangerous, right? Being this active is constantly pulling out all the pressure, all the gases, so it doesn't accumulate any pressure inside. This is better because uh, that can produce a bigger uh, eruption at some point. We're coming up to the hard hat area. <laughs> Snow, you're gonna have to wear one of these brain buckets. So at the come down, if you feel insecure with the balance at some point, you just put like this and start to sidewalks. That's gonna help you with the balance. Okay. All right, here we go. We are about to get started. We are stepping down into the cave here. We had to wear hard hats because, well, we don't want to hit our heads in the cave. And you can see the hard hats are quite scratched up. So, and you guys know I'm kind of tall compared to average, so. But I see bats flying out of the cave already. And we've got a steep entry down here. And uh, looks like it's dark. Okay, I can see some lights up ahead. Uh, this kind of reminds me of going into some sinkholes that I've gone into. It's cool and damp as we get down here. see the rocks they're like that lava puma stone so there's like good traction oh and there's moss all over the walls down here look at this wow of the lava Remember the Hawaiian eruption? That one that produced lava rivers, all right? We are in the lava river now. When the lava river passed through here, in a liquid state, um, it uh, started to go to get solidified on the outside first, all right? The lava creates like a crust locking in the other amount of lava. So the walls and the roof are this crust and could be created in five hours maybe. But on the inside, the lava keeps flowing and it could stay there for a year maybe. In that year, it starts to create an exit and then it filters up and leave this hollow space we are going to be walking in. In case you guys couldn't hear our guy just explaining it to us, this was a volcanic river. And so when the volcano had an eruption, a big river of lava comes down here. The top sort of cools off first, leaving all this down here still hot and flowing. And if and when it finds a good exit, all the lava drains out. And I spun my head, and this is what you have left over. Shiny. All right, we're continuing down into this cave and it's getting colder and colder. And you can hear and see water just dripping. This is but why? So the Pajo de Hoy, it's only created by a Hawaiian eruption. So this is the evidence that at some point of the history we have a Hawaiian eruption because the volcano does not produce 
this eruption. on a bridge now, a wooden bridge, because it's just turned into a bunch of a lava boulders, but it has opened up significantly. And other than us and the drips of water, it's absolutely silent in here. All right, another steep set of stairs. We just continue to go down in this volcano. So we just learned there's bats in this cave and the bats kind of run away from the lights that they have on during the tours as well as the noise, our voices, and so they move back to a darker place in the cave. But also in the cave is crickets and they're little, they're smaller than what you'd think of as a just an average cricket. But that's what the bat eats, the crickets. And then the bat's excrement also creates some sort of, I don't know, some kind of food that the crickets eat. And so what they've discovered over time in this little cave is it's got its own little ecosystem. Water purification. Purification. Yeah. Koiwe. So, these roots hanging down here are from the Koiwe tree up above us. They're the big giant trees. But watch your head and your feet at the same time, all right? <laughs> Five meters and then we pass to the chocolate cake. All and right. See why the name. <laughs> Five meters of a little teeny tiny cave. We're going down. It's gonna get dark. It's gonna get claustrophobic. Here we go. your head. Snow just banged your head, you guys. Uh, it definitely looks chocolate. See that, guys? The chocolate cave. Yeah, immediately. Looks kind. Of. So this is a natural formation. It's the same material, the same basalt, but with something something extra, all right? The basalt itself composed it's composed by uh, iron, all right? Mm -hmm. That iron at some points it's gonna start to get oxidated, like in a metal surface, uh. but in a rock this time. So iron oxide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So cool.
some point. Inside the tower. Listen. Um, it's not completely hollow, but comes. Yeah, at some points it's hollow. That's okay. it. So we've been learning a lot about the volcanoes, but there's definitely areas where different minerals mix in. And so the yellow right there, if you can see it, is kind of a sulfur. And then that white stuff right up there is calcium. And so there's just so many fascinating things about this little cave. Stay down, stay down. Down a little more, stay down, now you can come up. <laughs> Okay. And we are going to see the natural state of the game. That's it. Oh, we're turning off the lights. So, allá vamos. I'm going to start turning off the lights. We have reached the end of the tour part of the cave, but our tour guide, Pedro, just told us this thing runs all the way from the volcano, keeps going like three more kilometers, like a total of eight kilometers long. Crazy cave. Let's just assume these caves were created 300 years ago when this thing did its last huge Hawaiian eruption. And then it got sealed over. It, did, you know, nobody knew it was there. It was underground tubes with no openings. In 1960, or the 60s, I can't remember exactly, Chile suffered the largest, strongest earthquake ever recorded in the world. A 9.5 earthquake that lasted for 10 minutes. Now we've been in a, uh, a 7.3 earthquake that lasted about a minute in Mexico and that was plenty scary enough. I cannot imagine those poor people. But that is when they think that earthquake, you know, shook the ground through here and that is when the cave was exposed, they believe. In the 80s, some locals from this area started to discover the cave. That's when it's first documented. And then in the 1990s um, is when this park was created. And it's a privately owned park. And a really cool, interesting tour of some lava tubes turned caves under the most active volcano in Chile. And... We've also heard there's a little forest hike here with a cool sus suspension bridge after the amazing cave experience. Snow, it was a lot of steps up and kind of fast. The snow is going to take a break. I'm going to do the little hike. Honestly, I think she was afraid of the suspension bridge. But anyway, we're going to hustle along here. I want to see some of these trees they were telling us about where the roots stick down in to the ground and pop out through those caves so we cross this bridge but look at the walls of this canyon here that's pretty cool now i gotta be honest with you this suspension bridge is making me a little nervous as i hear these boards crack beneath my feet and it's pretty wobbly <laughs> look at that guy Wow, and I'm sure when the snow melts in the winter time, the water just races down through here and it's, what been, it's what's been cutting out this canyon. And then as you can see, it just washes the trees, just fall down into the canyon and decay. And look at these big trees. This is what I wanted to see. But there's an opening here, and this is where I'm gonna stop amongst these giant trees. There's a sign there that says, Ben Sendero. So, let's head back to snow. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!